What's up guys, this is Anime Crossover, I'm back at the new episode of Fire of Naruto Join the Avengers Part 6 and if you did enjoy the video, consider a like and if you much I like my content, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more crossover fictions. Now let's begin this new video. Chapter 18 The Masks We Wear Unfortunately, no it was a glorious hunt, but it was one of those rare days, and the boar has one today, Scourge answered, setting Spider-Man down. No no, 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 they turned to see Loki emerge in front of them. This is madness. You had him, strike him down. We hunters live by a code, Wooden told Loki. You are the sorriest excuses for Asgardians I have ever seen. Finish the job. Before Loki emerged, the three Asgardians stood in front of Spider-Man. Only to have Naruto's axe placed on his throat as Thor seized his sibling. Before Scourge could speak, Spider-Man returned to normal. The boar was immortal. I, my brother tricked you into doing his dirty work, Thor stated before Loki emerged on one of the wolves and flew away, followed by the Asgardians on the other two. Now, morning at Midtown High, squeal, Naruto jumped as a bunch of females dashed towards the bulletin board he had just approached, only to be met by Coulson, who was holding a giant poster. When are auditions, I'm so stiked, stiked, is that a word, Peter inquired as he approached the group and noticed the poster for a play about his alter persona. A play based on Spider-Man, I have a feeling this isn't going to go well, Naruto thought as the females left. It's a wild, wild web, all singing, all dancing, all Spider-Man, Peter read aloud, written by Mary Jane Watson, he asked, as a picture of Mary Jane appeared beneath a photo of Spider-Man. Naruto looked around and deadpanned when he saw three Coulson photos, one that looked like a studio logo, one of him dressed like a play director, and one of him at a piano keyboard. My first professional credit, MJ said, said as he appeared behind Peter. Well, semi-professional, okay, high school, but it's a credit. You wrote a Spider-Man show, MJ. Peter asked his pal, turning to face him. Who better, the world thinks Spider-Man is a menace. I know different, my play can change the public's opinion about him. Yeah, nice thought, but with Coulson as director and musician, I don't think that's going to happen. Naruto replied as Mary Jane waved him off. Why would I do that? Naruto sighed in disappointment. I'm sure that New Jersey fan would do it, she seems to like me. Midtown High followed. A. N. Up until the play, everything is canon and will be skipped. Naruto was walking through the halls when he noticed the trapster walking to the locker room. Naruto frowned when he learned from Peter that Sam had handed Flash Peter's outfit to audition in, but Flash refused to take it off and was caught up in a theft by the trapster who mistakenly thought Flash was Spider-Man. And Peter assisting Flash in beating him while the media was covering it. Naruto sighed before donning his mask and walking in just as Flash yelled, trapping Trapster in an inverted headlock. He then pressed his elbow against the villain's head before turning to face Flash, who had removed his Spider-Man mask. Listen, kid, unless it's Halloween, it's dangerous going around dressing like us. The bad guys will mistake you for us. Stark Industries a week later. Shinobi was patrolling when he received a distress signal from Iron Man at work and hurried straight to it. As soon as he entered, he was attacked by Iron Man, before another suit flew in and smashed the helmet off, revealing that no one was in the suit that attacked Naruto. Nice to see you, Iron Man responded, lifting his faceplate. What's going on, Tony? Naruto inquired of the arriving Iron Man. My hall of armors has been compromised. AIM. I'm not sure. Iron Man said before Spider-Man swung in. He claimed that he, Harry, and Norman were attacked by an armored suit before jumping into a hole in the floor, which revealed Iron Man's initial armored suit, a very huge one for Hulk-sized difficulties, and an older appearing suit. Well, shit, Naruto remarked as Iron Man fired missiles at the Hulkbuster suit, which was then hit by a massive Rasengan spiraling sphere. Odama Rasengan, big ball spiraling sphere. Naruto injected more chakra to his jutsu before Crimson Chakra leaked through, destroying the suit. He looked around to observe how the others handled the other outfits before noticing an octopus bot at a computer. He loaded the EMP clip on his crossbow pistol and discharged three shots at the robot, shorting it out. He walked over, missing a smaller robot emerge from the tentacle before dragging the robot over to the others. Heli Carrier for the shield. Before Naruto spoke, Shinobi observed Norman arguing with Iron Man about being attacked. Norman, he was hacked. I got the robot to prove it. Arrest the guy who attacked us and let us go, 
Harry cried as Naruto approached. Listen, kid, you're both here to be protected from Dr. Octopus, the person who hacked the armors. So sit down and wait. Now, why would Dr. Octopus be after you? And maybe the less accusatory but more helpful question, why does he want to kill you? Spider-Man asked, attempting to ease the tension. The door unexpectedly opened, revealing Connor striding in. Anything on the robot, Doc? Naruto inquired as Kurt approached him. You all need to see this. He led them to the lab, where the robot was being scanned in a tube. It's exquisite work, and it matches the sample from earlier, Connor stated, recalling receiving the claw from Spider-Man's initial fight with Dr. Octopus. Which was too damaged to study properly, and this confirmed my suspicion. This tech was invented by an old friend, he added, bringing up a photo of a younger and healthier Otto Octavius. Otto Octavius. We did our graduate studies together. Octavius was brilliant, confident, driven. I don't see the resemblance, Doc Ock could be his eviler and less hygienic cousin. Spider-Man observed the image. After he graduated, he went to work for a premier tech company, Connors continued, drawing everyone's attention to Norman. What? Why are we looking at Mr. Osborne? Spider-Man wondered before realizing what was going on. Whoa, wait. Doc Ock, the guy who's been in my webs for months, worked for you? I didn't know any, Doc Ock, until today, but Dr. Otto Octavius is a different story, Norman stated, explaining that he believed Otto died in an accident while working on a project. How do you explain his technology attacking you and hacking mine? Iron Man questioned, pointing to Norman. Last time I checked, my father was the victim here, Harry stated before the robot assaulted Norman. Iron Man shoots it with his beams while Spider-Man webbed it before staring down at what was left. I thought that was deactivated. Fury inquired, scanning the robot. It was, someone, hacked it remotely, with arc reactor energy. Do we even need to bother with a trail now that he's tried to kill me twice? Norman stood up. Oh, do it in front of Fury, Norman. You know he's not that stupid, Naruto replied before someone blasted through the wall. Boom, hello, Norman. The smoke dispersed to reveal Doc Ock in an armored outfit with only red eyes and a yellow arc reactor in his chest. A, N. See this episode for a better image, you shouldn't play with other people's stuff, Doc. Iron Man shouted before launching himself at the armored villain. I never play, Mr. Stark, Dr. Octopus said before slamming Iron Man against the wall and hurling tentacle-tied orbs at him. He was then blasted through the hole and into the air. All agents to the lab. The intruder is armed, extremely armed, and dangerous, Fury stated as he shut the lab down. Spider-Man then leapt on Dr. Octopus and punched him in the face, Love the new duds, Ock. Covering your face was a stroke of genius. Naruto ran over and fired his crossbow at him, only to have a yellow barrier block his bolts before diving under the doctor and hitting him with his tonfa sticks and escaping a blast from two of his tentacles that froze the floor. After avoiding Doc Ock's assaults, Doc Ock seized the Osborns and began shocking Harry before fleeing the hole he created. As Spider-Man looked at his iron armor, Naruto leapt out. Naruto dove after Dr. Octopus, whom he could barely see before summoning his bike and flying after the enemy. He then landed on top of Oscorp and heard Norman chatting to Dr. Octopus on the balcony, which he couldn't make out owing to his distance, before silently heading down. I'm here to repay the favor, Doc Ock exclaimed, forming a yellow sword in one of his tentacles as Naruto slumped to the ground and Spider-Man webbed Norman away. Naruto drew a kunai and stabbed the tentacle that was holding Harry, shorting it out and dragging the unconscious kid away. Spider-Man, dressed in his gear, sat down on his three faux spider legs and gazed at Dr. Octopus. I'll see you strung up for that, Dr. Octopus yelled at the heroes. Spider-Man fought Doc Ock, who boasted about secretly working for Norman and being in charge of everything that had happened to Spider-Man in recent months. Naruto cast a peek towards the businessman who had just departed with his son. He then looks around to witness Spider-Man hit Doc Ock's arc reactor, which causes it to glow brighter. Iron Man landed unexpectedly after also hitting Dr. Octopus. What's going on? He demanded, drawing Iron Man's attention to him. I don't put everything on a computer, the good stuff's up here, Iron Man said, stroking his chin. He then struck Doc Ock's reactor before Spider-Man punched him off the balcony and into several buildings. Later, Fury and Norman stood at the spot where Dr. Octopus would have landed, only to discover a crater. No sign of Doc Ock. Looks like he made a clean break, Fury stated as Iron Man approached. If it's any consolation, 
I won't rest until he's behind bars. Keep your toys where they belong, and I'll consider us even, Norman said before Naruto could respond. And you tell the press that it was Ak that actually attacked you. Or I'll tell every press there is in this city and on video sharing websites that he used to work for you. Don't think that will do well for your image. Unknown location later on, Norman, dressed in a trench coat, entered a vast area where steps rose as he traveled until he reached a large tube that had Otto in water with a face oxygen mask on. You can rest now, they're all gone. Just be thankful I found you before S.H.I.E.L.D. did. I know I am. You single-handedly took on three of the city's greatest heroes. And best of all, you've upset Spider-Man. Made him nervous. You're amazing. Welcome back to the family, Otto. We have plenty of work ahead of us. Norman said to Otto who was still there. Heli carrier for the S.H.I.E.L.D. It's messing with my head, you know. I want to give Norman the benefit of the doubt, for Harry's sake and possibly for mine as well. Spider-Man stated to the two Avengers, mask off and faceplate on. Kid, we all have people in our life who we look up to, sometimes they're not who we think they are, Tony told Spider-Man. My advice is to use your head, listen to your gut, follow your heart, and look, if you need someone to look up to. Well, there's always me, Tony said as Spider-Man turned to face him. So, what, we hug now? You do, and all you need beam you to Detroit, kid, Tony said before taking off. Spider-Man questioned Naruto, who groaned, what do you think? I always had a weird feeling around Norman. You don't get that much money or high up in business without making enemies, and or keep a clear conscience. What about Tony? Spider-Man inquired as Naruto gazed out the window towards the metropolis. Tony started off as a spoiled rich brat that only cared about money until he was captured with his own weapons and forced to make them for his captors until he was able to get free. And that was at the cost of another hostage who helped him build his armor and saved his life by creating a prototype arc reactor that kept the shrapnel away from his heart. Naruto then continued by turning to Spider-Man. Look, like I said when Harry was using Venom. We'll keep an eye on him before doing anything. So, what, we hug now? You do, and all you need beam you to Detroit, kid, Tony said before taking off. Spider-Man questioned Naruto, who groaned, what do you think? I always had a weird feeling around Norman. You don't get that much money or high up in business without making enemies, and or keep a clear conscience. What about Tony? Spider-Man inquired as Naruto gazed out the window towards the metropolis. Tony started off as a spoiled rich brat that only cared about money until he was captured with his own weapons and forced to make them for his captures until he was able to get free. And that was at the cost of another hostage who helped him build his armor and saved his life by creating a prototype arc reactor that kept the shrapnel away from his heart. Naruto then continued by turning to Spider-Man. Look, like I said when Harry was using Venom. We'll keep an eye on him before doing anything. Now, location is unknown. Un. Before looking around, Spider-Man landed in a dense fog and smoke. I need backup. Front up. Side up. He inquired, glancing around as lights swirled around him. Your worst enemy cannot harm you as much as your own unguarded thoughts, Iron Fist explained as he stood next to Spider-Man. Tell me you're not freaking out and maybe I'll calm down. And if I am freaking out, Iron Fist said as they moved out of the way of something being flung at them. Iron Fist. Spider-Man inquired as a shadowy figure rushed around the area. How can someone so big move so fast? It's game over, man. When Spider-Man spun back, he saw Nova shooting his beams at random. Nova. He inquired, ducking a blast himself. Watch where you're throwing those things. He's everywhere. How can he be everywhere? Get down here so we can strategize, screamed Spider-Man to his teammate. Only for something to strike Nova and knock him down, Buckethead? Ah, Spider-Man then went onto a steel platform, where he discovered a knocked out White Tiger and Power Man bound to a steel bar. Power Man, White Tiger, guys, Spider-Man approached them before coming to a halt. Hold on. Why does this feel like bait and I'm running into a trap? Because that's exactly what you did. As a circular shield lodged itself in the floor beside Spider-Man's head, he was punched off the platform. A finger instantly touched his nose. Tag, I win. When Spider-Man opened his eyes, he saw Captain America kneeling at his head, smiling, before the haze cleared and the lights turned on, revealing the heli carrier's training room as the others walked up, rubbing their aching muscles. Good job. Shinobi commented as he walked over from the wall. You all lasted a minute longer than the last round. Steve Rogers, by the way, it's a pleasure to meet you all, 
Cap added as he assisted Spider-Man in standing. Naruto asked the soldier to give some tips to his team before arriving to go over Shield's logs. Naruto then looked up to see Fury and Coulson bickering about Captain America doing that, despite the fact that Coulson was just concerned about being embarrassed in front of his favorite hero. That was so brutally awesome, can we do it again, please? Spider-Man said, his hands clasped together. Best two out of three? Cap questioned as Naruto crossed his arms beside him. Are you kidding? Yes. Tiger exclaimed as he approached Spider-Man, how often do you get to learn a battle strategy from Captain America? So far, just this one time. I thought you were good at math. Nova stated, hovering above them, and having White Tiger mockingly repeat what he said. Hey. Maybe you should visit more often, Cap, they're never this pumped up for training. Naruto remarked as Captain America smiled. All right, everyone, if Cap is finished with you, we can just- The war hero interrupted Coulson, who was speaking over the speakers from the chamber overlooking the training room. I believe the new recruits want another round, he said, placing his shield on his back and reaching out his right hand to Spider-Man, hey, you ready? Spider-Man grabbed it fast and looked up to see Coulson shaking his head. Our lives have just gotten 1000% cooler, Captain America, sir. He exclaimed as he saluted with his left hand. Uh, you salute with your right hand, White Tiger corrected her teammate, who promptly exchanged hands. See if you still feel that way in three minutes. Prepare the court. Let's see what Naruto's team has, Captain America said as Coulson dashed over to the two Avengers. You know maybe we should wrap this up before something disastrous happens. Oh please, I trust them, and this is why we train, Naruto stated as Cap soothed the agent before walking over to Naruto. The Avenger was then surrounded by the team. Okay, replied Power Man, cracking his neck and then his knuckles. This time I'm gonna show him why they call me Power Man. Dude, you call yourself Power Man. This is Captain America, he once punched a tank unconscious. Actually, that's a myth, Captain America explained as Spider-Man turned to face him. No, I'm pretty sure that's true. Let's up the ante, Cap stated before dropping his shield on the ground. The first one of you, any of you, that takes me out, gets to keep the shield. Do you know what I could sell that for on the internet? Sweet. The problem you all have is that you all believe your unique power is your only asset, Cap stated to the students. Power Man charged over and launched a blow that Cap deflected. By relying on a single power or weapon, you become predictable to any wiser opponent, Captain America explained before tossing Power Man over his shoulder and into the wall. Un. White Tiger moved over behind him and reached down with her clawed hand for a swipe. Yaw. Captain America grabbed her arm and pivoted to toss her at Iron Fist, who was running after her. By using all your skills and being unpredictable, you're more likely to stand a fighting chance. I don't know. I kinda like my odds, shouted Spider-Man, thrusting out his arms and shooting his webs at the Avenger. Cap leaned out of the path, allowing the webs to hit Coulson, and then yanked his shirt and jacket off, revealing a Captain America-themed undershirt. Hey. Well, I'm embarrassed for you, Naruto replied as Power Man stood up before being thrown against the wall by webbing as Spider-Man and Captain America clashed. Hiya. Iron Fist exclaimed as he kicked Cap, who blocked. Un. He exclaimed before grabbing the monk's arm and leaping up for an armbar takedown. Only for Iron Fist to flip his arm and break free. Nice. Cap exclaimed as he and Iron Fist exchanged strikes and avoided others. Jiu-Jitsu? Kung Fu? Krav Maga? Iron Fist inquired, attempting to deduce Cap's combat technique. All of the above, Cap answered, ducking White Tiger's swipe. Hiya. They then double-teamed the Avenger until Tiger rushed up the wall and dived at him before tackling and rolling him numerous times before Cap pins her to the ground. Captain America lowered his fist, only to have two webs cling to his forearm. Gotcha. Cap gazed down at White Tiger, who suddenly swiped at him. Yaw. Yeah he said as she rose for another stroke, hiya. Power Man and Iron Fist fled before Cap swung Spider-Man around, grabbed him, and hurled him at White Tiger. Spider-Man stood up and held his arms out, but nothing happened. Looking down, he noticed his gloves were missing before noticing Captain America putting them on. And that was something I picked up growing up in Brooklyn. You have to think of your powers for what they are, one tool in your toolbox. Tiger then somersaulted over for a kick, which Cap avoided by swinging her around with Spider-Man's webs. No, 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 no. She was then hurled into Power Man before Cap gained Nova's attention who was filming by taking his phone with a webline. 
Captain America then took a step to the side and turned Nova's helmet around. Can't see, he exclaimed, colliding with Iron Fist and Spider-Man. You outlasted last time, Captain America stated as he tossed Spider-Man his gloves. Every battle you learn from is a win. At this rate, they'll be undefeated by then, Naruto predicted as he and the others approached. Well, I think we all had enough fun for one day, Coulson exclaimed as he ran up the stairs, but the captain and I have extremely important shield business to attend to. You just want to hang out with your man crush, Naruto remarked, sitting next to Captain America. I was hoping to go over a few pointers with, Cap was cut off as he reached for his shield. I'll have someone write you a memo, would you like to join me in my office? Coulson inquired, as Captain America nodded. Sure, I'll leave this here, Cap remarked as he hurled his shield into the air, caught it with his opposite hand, and smashed it down on the floor with it sticking up. You can hold it, but don't throw it, it's a weapon, not a toy. He was then saluted by the team, sir, yes sir, Coulson, Captain America, and Fury all left, leaving the team and Naruto alone in the training room. Is it just me, or was that the best butt kicking we ever got? Nova remarked, glancing around. We went toe to toe with Captain America, said White Tiger, I think we just graduated. Do you think he'll pick one of us to be his sidekick? Spider-Man inquired as he looked about. Cap doesn't do sidekicks, anymore, long story, Naruto explained as he approached. Nova approached and took Cap's shield, me first. Remember Captain America's words, it's not a toy, Iron Fist stated, putting air quotes around it. Yeah, how about we just put it back where we found it, Tiger said, staring at the shield. And, we, means, you, Nova. It should be fine as long as you don't throw it, Naruto said, crossing his arms. Face palm as Spider-Man snatched it and flung it to Power Man, only for it to bounce off his chest. Crack. And then fly out the window. Damn it. Naruto exclaimed as he looked at the team. What did Cap and I say? I got it. Spider-Man said as he jumped out, bringing his arms to his sides and opening them. And exposed webs linked to his arms and sides, allowing him to glide down after the shield. Uh, hey guys. The crew waited for Captain America to return. Where's my shield? The city of New York. As the shield bounced through the streets, Spider-Man swung after it. He ran towards Iron Man before watching the shield slash trapster's tank and pulling May out of the way while she was purchasing groceries. The shield then bounced inside the Latvarian embassy, where it was picked up by Doctor Doom. When he peeked out the window, he noticed Spider-Man on the wall. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Doom, sir, could I have my shield back, please? Doom simply walks away and Spider-Man is attacked by a heat-seeking missile that chased him up a building before being hit with a kanai. Boom. When Spider-Man landed and saw Shinobi and Captain America on motorcycles, it erupted. Is that yours? I hope you didn't scratch it, Spider-Man joked, seeking to calm Cap down. Where's my shield? Cap inquired, motioning to the embassy. You have really bad luck, Naruto muttered as he flipped over the edge and landed in front of the building. The others followed as they crept in, Cap explained that Doom lost his immunity by launching a missile into American territory, and explained that Doom wants to reverse engineer the vibranium in the shield to make his armor invincible. As they approached the building's wall, Naruto nodded and activated his sonar. Doom bots and Doom dogs, Naruto explained before nodding and shutting off his sonar. He then took out his crossbow and blasted EMPs at the cameras while sculpting Doom faces on the walls as they attempted to open machine guns, they smashed open the doors to find robotic Dobermans growling at them. Ah, that's adorable, Spider-Man exclaimed before Naruto threw shurikens at them, hitting them in the heads and shutting them down. Suddenly, robots with green accents walked in before Naruto raced through them, his hands covered with electrifying, Denpo Seka, Telegram Flash. They then hurried up the stairs and halls, Naruto closing the doors as Spider-Man webbed the halls to slow down more bots, until they arrived at Doom's computer room, which was vacant. They approached the main one and saw a map of the United States with many regions circled. New York, Washington, Dallas, and Cleveland. Doom was using this embassy as a base of operations for an invasion, Cap stated, his gaze fixed on the screen. Really, Cleveland? Why? Spider-Man inquired as more Doom bots entered the room. Cap then pressed a switch, which shut off the bots, how do you know what? The war hero interrupted Spider-Man. It says, Doom bot master control, in Latvarian. They ran to the roof, only to see Dr. Doom leave in a little jet, which Naruto jumped over and landed on the cockpit windshield. Give up Doom, you're under arrest, 
he cried as they flew a few blocks away. You can't arrest me in my own embassy, it's Latvian soil. Yeah, that's a mile that way. You also attacked America's soil earlier, so your diplomatic immunity's gone, now land this thing, or I will, and you won't see light again. Doom reached for his joystick, only to have a kanai placed near his eye. Try it and you'll be missing an eye, Naruto warned before Doom landed and shield operatives escorted Doom away. As he and Spider-Man landed on the motorcycles, Naruto grabbed Captain America's shield. Heli carrier for the shield back in the heli carrier, Spider-Man informs the other trainees about the situation, but they don't believe him when he says Naruto and Captain America were the ones who defeated Doom. Coulson is about to blow up at them but Captain America stops him by throwing his shield at him as he turns to look at the Avengers in training before turning to Naruto. There could be some future Avengers here, if they all stay out of trouble. Ha! Huh. No chance with me as their leader, Naruto replied before turning to face his troops after Cap saluted them. And had Naruto's crew return the salute, Cap then returned his gaze to Coulson and spoke, I'll take that back now. Coulson tossed it, and it bounced off the walls and into the window, and ordered Naruto to jump over and grab the shield. Don't want to repeat, do we? He questioned as he handed Cap his shield back. Heli carrier for the shield back in the heli carrier, Spider-Man informs the other trainees about the situation, but they don't believe him when he says Naruto and Captain America were the ones who defeated Doom. Coulson is about to blow up at them but Captain America stops him by throwing his shield at him as he turns to look at the Avengers in training before turning to Naruto. There could be some future Avengers here if they all stay out of trouble. Ha, huh, no chance with me as their leader, Naruto replied before turning to face his troops after Cap saluted them. And had Naruto's crew return the salute, Cap then returned his gaze to Coulson and spoke, I'll take that back now. Coulson tossed it, and it bounced off the walls and into the window, and ordered Naruto to jump over and grab the shield. Don't want to repeat, do we? He questioned as he handed Cap his shield back. Now, Queen's Knight in New York, you guys went without me. Peter, I understand because he's out with Harry right now, Naruto stated in his spacious shed that housed his motorcycle, Sans Mask. White Tiger was evading a chain while on his watch. We were just patrolling, then we ran into the frightful four. Okay, I'm on my way, Naruto shouted as he dashed out of the shed and onto the street, his mask on. And passed Coulson on her porch, talking to Mei. Naruto groaned as he remembered Coulson asking Mei out on a date when the beetle attacked them, and assisted Peter in coping with his aunt dating again following Ben's death. Warehouse Oscorp. Shinobi dashed through the warehouse door and skidded to a halt when he saw his squad, minus Spider-Man, fighting each of the frightful four. Okay, really, you had to call me here for this. Thundra, sure, with her strength, but come on, you can take care of the rest with your eyes closed, Naruto cried, staying out of the fight, knowing that his team could now easily take care of the bunch. Spider-Man appeared out of nowhere and landed, so, we gotta tip these guys are raiding an Oscorp warehouse. Looks that way. Tiger exclaimed as he kicked Thundra away. They heard laughter and turned to see the trapster unlock a massive crate, releasing gigantic octobots to assault the heroes. It's a trap, Nova exclaimed as they began to fight. Thanks, General, exclaimed Naruto before pulling out a kanai. We've trained for this, take them out. The team took turns taking out groups of bots until coming to a halt in the middle of the room. That wasn't so difficult. Spidey made these octobots look like a real pain. Tiger stated before Naruto turned around. Where the hell is Spider-Man? He wondered, having not seen the web head. Shit, that had to be the plan all along, Naruto said, pulling out his watch. Fury, Spider-Man was captured by Doc Ock. Location is unknown. Spider-Man awoke with a moan and a shake of his head. Where am I? Definitely not in Kansas anymore. You and your incessant blather, do you ever shut up? Spider-Man turned around to see Doc Ock emerge from the shadows of the room. He's suddenly bald and wearing new glasses within a green floating bubble sans tentacles. Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man asked, moaning in displeasure. You look horrible. Where are your robot arms? I'm not even sure I can call you, Doc Ock, anymore. Maybe, Doc Jellyfish, or, Doc Slug, but that's it. Spider-Man then goes for his left wrist, and noticed he was entangled in wires and noticed his watch was missing. You might it difficult to call your friends, seeing as I took your little communicator. Unlike you, I learned from my mistakes. No Iron Man, no shield, no friends are coming to save you. Tonight it will be just the three of us. You, me and my revenge. The doctor spoke from his bubble. 
Could you serve that vengeance with a side of fries? I missed dinner tonight and… Wait a second, I got it. Dr. Blowfish, Spider-Man screamed, causing Doc Ock to growl violently. Warehouse Oscorp. Fury stated over Naruto's watch, Octavius has scrambled Spidey's communicator, it's giving off ghost signals to several locations. Sigh. Then we'll check them all, Naruto replied before putting his watch away. All right, team, let's, he trailed off as he noticed a little spider-like robot going away. Let's follow that, Naruto said, following the slow-moving robot to a tunnel near the warehouse. Location is unknown. As the screen he was gazing at turned green, Doc Ock took a sample of Spider-Man's blood and said that he was developing a new venom that he could control. When he saw Spider-Man was free, he unleashed two of his bots on the hero. And Spider-Man easily dispatched them, sending one flying at Dr. Octopus, bursting his bubble. No, so, close, Spider-Man then approached the villain, I don't want to brag, but I just punked you again, his spider sense suddenly tingles, spider sense. Okay, doc. What else you got up your tentacle? He questioned before being tasered from behind and pinned to the ground. Ah. Spider-Man raises his head to see Norman Osborn. Norman is dressed in silver armor with a black suit underneath and a three-finger metal glove. Norman Osborn? Spider-Man exclaimed before rising. Wait, are you telling me in that? I just tased you, bro, sorta of way that you work for Doc Ock? Work for him, hardly. Otto is my employee. I hired him to obtain your DNA. Didn't know you were such a fan. Norman. Couldn't I have just given you a signed autograph instead? Spider-Man responded. Be silent. Norman shouted as he tasered Spider-Man once more, causing him to scream in agony. Such power squandered on such a fool. I'll put it to better use than stopping minor crimes and cracking childish jokes, he muttered as Doc Ock slid away. Imagine an unstoppable arachnid army under my control. I will crush the competition. Neither S.H.I.E.L.D. nor Stark Industries will be able to challenge Oscorp's supremacy. That is the true use of power. Spider-Man simply stared at him. Ah, he cries as Osborn touches him once more. I've been following you for so long that I know everything about you. It's almost like we're family, Norman said, looking down at the hero. You have no idea, Spider-Man laments as Osborn approaches to remove his mask. Doc Ock, on the other hand, injects him with Spider-Man's DNA that he had recently experimented on. What did you do? I've just given you everything you've ever wanted, Norman. Consider this my resignation, Doc Ock remarked from inside a metal container, leaving only his head exposed. A. N. See this episode for a better image, it doesn't pay these days to turn your back on anyone, Spider-Man says before being snatched up by Doc Ock. Naruto and his friends. Arg, could you go any slower? Nova exclaimed to the sluggish bot. Could you speed it up with your power? Naruto suggested while the others leaned against the wall, waiting for the bot to move away. Good idea. Nova exclaimed before launching a tiny bolt towards the bot. And then had it speed down the tunnel while the team chased after it. Move it, bucket head. Location is unknown. As he lay on the floor, Norman groans and pants heavily. Otto. Why? After everything I've done for you. For me, for me, you treated me like a slave. Destroyed my lab with me in it. And turned me into this. All you've done for me is give me pain, Doc Ock shouted at Norman. Got a point there, Norman. Worst boss ever, remarked Spider-Man from his perch. It's no use fighting it, Osborn. Norman rushes over to Doc Ock, but collapses weakly. You, you've betrayed me. You arrogant buffoon. If I had cracked the formula, don't you think I would have used it on myself? I've just injected you with a fusion of Venom's and Spider-Man's DNA if my calculations are correct, it should produce a most interesting result only this time one that I control. Looks like the grown-ups have some explaining to do, so I'm just gonna. Spider-Man wriggled free and spun a web to flee. Doc Ock, on the other hand, smacks him around. Ouch, that hurt. Do you want to know the most delicious part, Osborn, you pompous half-wit? After all of your schemes of catching Spider-Man and stealing his DNA, you never realized he belonged to you all along. His powers are a product of Oscorp's technology. Although I have yet to discover how it happened, Spider-Man is your greatest accomplishment. Doc Ock stated that Oscorp had developed Spider-Man's. Doc Ock then cackles as he places a shock collar around Osborn's neck. As an art form, vengeance is nothing if not beautiful, now it's just a matter of figuring out what makes you tick, fortunately, I don't need you alive for that. He then pins Spider-Man down and pulls out a circular saw blade. In fact, dissection is desirable. Sounds fun. Let me check my schedule. 
How about never? That work for ya? Spider-Man replied as Naruto and the rest of the gang broke in. Fury's lapdogs and the Avenger. What the hell is going on here? Naruto wondered, looking down at Norman on the ground. Doc Ock hurled several panels at the squad, but Power Man and Iron Fist blocked them while Tiger jumped to attack Ock, who had moved out of the way. They immediately heard Norman groan and cry as he began to transform. His skin has transformed into green scales, and he now has enlarged pointy ears, yellow pupil-less eyes, and a double chin with horns protruding out. As Norman raged and fought Dr. Octopus, Doc Ock tossed a tank and set fire to the room. Doc Ock then activated the collar he had placed on Norman, only for Norman to tear it off, shocking Dr. Octopus as well. Norman snatched Doc Ock's tentacles and twirled him around, smacking the heroes in the process, before tossing the mad scientist to the other side of the room and turning to face the heroes, only to discover that they had vanished. Naruto had them rush out ahead in the tunnel to protect against Norman before he caught up and smashed through Iron Fist, White Tiger, pinned down Power Man, and stomped on his left arm. Ah, and then broke it. As the real Naruto glanced to Norman, he made a clone that grabbed the others and vanished. Norman, if you're in there, let me know, Naruto replied as he heard an explosion on the other end of the room. No Norman, only Goblin, Norman exclaimed before being struck by a massive Rasengan, spiraling sphere. Naruto chased Norman down the hall after noticing he was in the Oscorp building, but there was no sign of Norman. Med Bay, Shield, Heli Carrier, you did well, team, Fury stated as he walked through the Med Bay, where the team was being treated on cots, helmets and masks removed, and Luke's left arm in a sling. S-H-I-E-L-D is tracking the goblin. I should have seen it coming, Peter exclaimed as Naruto approached him. That's because you have blinders on when it comes to your friends and family. When it comes to the hero part, sometimes you gotta put away your personal life. It's kind of like when the police have to arrest someone they know if they're the ones there. We'll get him. We? You don't get it. There is no, we, it's my DNA, my friend. My friend as well, Peter. Don't think you're the only one who cares about what happens to him. Naruto cried as Peter put on his mask. No one else suffers as a result of my actions. It's my problem. It's my mess. I have to clean it up, and I'm going to do it alone, Peter muttered as the door closed behind him. Med Bay. Shield Heli Carrier. You did well, Team, Fury stated as he walked through the Med Bay, where the team was being treated on cots, helmets and masks removed, and Luke's left arm in a sling. Shield is tracking the goblin. I should have seen it coming, Peter exclaimed as Naruto approached him. That's because you have blinders on when it comes to your friends and family. When it comes to the hero part, sometimes you gotta put away your personal life. It's kind of like when the police have to arrest someone they know if they're the ones there. We'll get him. We? You don't get it. There is no, we, it's my DNA, my friend. My friend as well, Peter. Don't think you're the only one who cares about what happens to him. Naruto cried as Peter put on his mask. No one else suffers as a result of my actions. It's my problem. It's my mess. I have to clean it up, and I'm going to do it alone, Peter muttered as the door closed behind him. Now. Four days later, in New York City, the Green Goblin event occurred four days ago. Naruto and the crew haven't seen much of Peter, who only showed up for school the day before. Naruto, aware that he has been scouting out Harry's position in case Norman does anything. Naruto was walking to school when he noticed Harry's limo come up, then saw the Green Goblin jump down and grasp the hood. Damn, Naruto cursed as he dashed to the alley beside the school to change. He then ran and noticed his crew rushing behind Spider-Man, who had just landed. I thought I told you all to stay out, Spider-Man said behind Power Man's back. Didn't listen, picked that habit up from you. Naruto dashed over before leaping into the air, bringing a tonfa stick down on the goblin before turning to face the others. Team, we'll distract the goblin, Spider-Man, get Harry out of here. But, now, Naruto shouted as he moved to avoid the green goblin's grasp on his leg. Naruto then leapt up and landed a chakra-infused kick on Goblin's head, causing Goblin to strike the ground and crack it. He looked up to see Spider-Man telling Harry that his father had been injected and changed into the Goblin, as the Goblin jumped up and grabbed Naruto, throwing him towards the school. Naruto flipped to land in a crouch on the wall, creating spider web cracks in the process. He noticed Coulson running out with armor and a helmet to conceal his identity. As his guys distracted the Goblin, Naruto jumped over to Spider-Man and Harry, Harry, go with the agent, now, it's not up for debate. But, 
either stay here, get hurt or killed, or go with the agent and stay safe. That right now is not your dad, that is him on Venom if it helps you get the hell out of here. I will knock you out if I have to. If that's my father, promise me you won't hurt him, Harry said as Naruto turned around. Civilians, shield personnel and my team take priority. If saving them means injuring your dad, I will choose them. You're not supposed to be here, screamed Spider-Man, drawing Naruto's attention. I'm not your friend in this outfit, I'm not only your leader, but an Avenger, so I don't care what you say, you don't order me, I order you, Naruto remarked as Power Man threw a fire hydrant at Goblin, knocking him unconscious. Tiger to Fury, Mean Green, is down, awaiting extraction at Midtown High, Tiger said as Naruto pinned Goblin with Ninja Wire. S-H-I-E-L-D's on the way, Fury out, Naruto then made hand gestures and smashed his hand down in front of a dirt dome that covered Goblin before repeating the technique thrice, each one larger than the last, to keep Goblin down. Okay everyone inside, we'll go to the helicarrier. They entered the school while Harry was blindfolded, then walked to the detention room and dropped through the floor. Helicarrier for the shield. The team entered the main area as Harry exposed himself and Fury approached the group. We're taking off right now, Fury said, commanding the carrier to lift clear of the water. You played it like a leader, Coulson told Naruto, who was staring out the window. I know, ground team, goblin status update, Fury muttered as gents typed on a keyboard. We got him, director Fury, goblin down, I repeat, goblin down, a guy said over the intercoms, eliciting applause. Naruto glanced to the right and noticed one of Shield's jets approaching them. Naruto narrowed his eyes and took few steps before shouting. Get the hell out of here. The goblin rushed out of the cockpit, cackling hysterically, and crashed into the mostly empty room, emerging from the wreckage. Goblin smiled sinisterly before speaking in a different voice. We got him, Director Fury. Goblin down, I repeat, goblin down. Dad, you're alive, oh, yes, son, Goblin said in a deeper tone. Very much so, don't believe Spider-Man, Harry. Don't believe a word. I got you now, Norman. Naruto called up a hollow screen that showed Octopus injecting Norman with a serum. That's what happened Harry, that's not your father right now. I gotta hand it to you, Osborne, you do surprise well. You were a decent man just a few days ago, Fury stated, pistol leveled at Goblin. I, evolved. Then you're smart enough to understand, we can get you a cure. Cure? I am cured. Harry then began to walk, eluding anyone who tried to stop him before a small amount of venom leaked through his garments. Iron Fist and Power Man tried to stop him, but Harry threw them back. He attempted to speak with his father, only to be yanked back by webbing as Naruto pressed a button, causing a blue energy wall to appear. Naruto pressed the button again after removing Harry from the room, indicating that Goblin had vanished. Where'd he go? Power Man wondered as he looked about. Through there, Naruto indicated a staircase near the window. They got to a ruined chamber where Kurt lay beneath rubble with his right arm under a large piece of the ceiling as they went through it. Kurt, Dr. Connors, Naruto and Power Man drew him aside, revealing that his right arm had been crushed. He's, he's not gone, Connors stated before Goblin jumped out of the smoke on a glider with two metal gloves on his hands. Such wonderful toys, Connors. This new glove. Goblin paused as he examined his glove, it's a perfect fit. Weak. Naruto shouted as he cloned Connors and escorted him out of the room. A glove is only as strong as the fist within it, Iron Fist stated, his right hand glowing before launching his attack. He hauled Spider-Man off the glider and sent Goblin flying into the wall before the Goblin roared and held his hands out. I may have been hasty in writing you off, Goblin grumbled, rubbing his left palm over his brow. You are truly one of my greatest achievements, Spider-Man, Goblin shouted as he rose to his feet. Would you like to know who is to blame for who I am? My mentors, Spider-Man said as he ran to hit Goblin. My associates, my group, he roared, each sentence hitting Goblin. My. What a powerful speech, Goblin exclaimed before being blasted through the hull to the outside by Nova. Where has he gone? Nova inquired, her gaze drawn to the hole on the outside. The carrier shook violently before Fury dashed to a computer. He took off the engines. This is Director Fury. We're going down, he stated before pressing a button. Order Alpha Zeta 9. The helicarrier has been completely evacuated. Repeat, complete evacuation. Fury, I got the goblin, Naruto stated, leading the squad to the center of the room. 
everyone else, leave. That's an order, he remarked before everyone in the room felt a sense of dread and malice. Looking back, they noticed Naruto was covered in red chakra as he moved forward. He messed with my friends, my family, they said. He must now pay the price, that goes for you, Harry, Naruto growled, his voice contorted with rage at the end. You said you'd help him, they exclaimed as they noticed Harry panting near the door. I am, Naruto said as he hurried over to Harry, but right now he's not himself and just took out the engines, putting millions of people in danger. So shut up and join the rest in getting out of here. Naruto noticed Venom begin to ooze out before flaring his red chakra and frightened it away before knocking Harry out with a chop to the neck and tossing him to his squad as the floor they were on began to fall. The goblin then dropped down and looked at Naruto before punching him through many rooms, causing the heli carrier to fall back into the water as the rooms began to flood. Come in, shinobi. What is your age? Tiger inquired, looking at Naruto's watch. Don't worry about me, I can handle myself, Naruto said before avoiding a shard of metal. Choosing the difficult path. Nah, going for the easy way, Naruto smirked, cracking his neck. You, on the other hand, choose the difficult path. Naruto then ran up to the ceiling, kicking water up to the ceiling, and rapidly punched Goblin numerous times before spinning out of the room, while several laser shots hit the Goblin. Do you ever pay attention to me? Nope, said Naruto, looking over his shoulder and seeing Fury with a gun. And I'm not going to start anytime soon, Naruto said before hearing an explosion. Boom, looking back, he saw a Goblin fly away, opening another hole and allowing more water to enter, as a piece of metal hit Fury on the leg. After removing the red chakra, Naruto assisted Fury to an escape pod before swimming to assist anyone else stuck aboard the sinking vessel. Outside, several pods floated to the shore while everyone focused on the sinking carrier, which was mostly submerged. Where has Shinobi gone? Tiger inquired as ten more pods emerged from the water. Down there, saving everybody, Connors remarked, his gaze fixed on the carrier. Boom. As everyone closed their eyes, the carrier detonated. No, Tiger shouted as he saw fire cover the carrier. What exactly are we looking at? Looking over their shoulders, they noticed Shinobi, tears on his clothes, walking up as burns and cuts healed, and he was immediately caught by Tiger in an embrace, causing the ninja to grin. I knew you liked me. She reddened rapidly and let him go, you're still alive. I knew it the whole time. The others congratulated their leader, but Naruto stopped Harry from pushing him, saying, Look, kid, I had a long morning and I'm too tired for your bullshit. Your father is still alive, but I was more concerned with the other people on the carrier in this city, so shut up and go home. Before Spider-Man lifted his hand, Harry pushed himself past the heroes. And was halted by Iron Fist, who said, Let him go. Maintain equilibrium. Spider-Man may be his adversary in battle, but Peter remains a buddy at home. Speaking of homes, they turned to gaze at the ship, and Power Man said, I think ours just sank. Did you all live on the ship? Spider-Man inquired as White Tiger turned to face her leader. We'll talk about our housing situation later. First and foremost, what is that red? Chakra you used, you've never done that before. We'd never needed it before, and we were in a hurry. But it's my tenant, Naruto said as he crossed his arms. Tenant. Nova asked as red chakra covered Naruto before forming a ball beside him. Suddenly, a red furred fox appeared with nine tails that quickly turned to one appeared. Hello meet Sax. This freeloading mud is Kurama, a chakra beast that was sealed in me at birth as he was controlled to attacking my village and that was the only way to save it. Screw you, Naruto, Kurama reacted angrily to Naruto's remark. Naruto's house knight, Queens. Pick any room upstairs that merely contains a bed and dresser. The closets will also be open in them. Really no rules outside of keeping my house clean, 10 o'clock curfew, 12 on weekends and holidays, Naruto said, dressed in civilian clothes and carrying a duffel bag. That's just being inside. On weekdays, lights out will be at 11 p.m., and by 12.30 a.m. on weekends and holidays. You also wash your own laundry. Do you have any questions? What's the bathroom schedule? Ava inquired, crossing her arms. We'll go without one for a few days to see how long each of you takes. To maintain warm water, the longest will go last. However, you will each wait 10 minutes after the other to allow the water heater to reheat the water. Okay? Do you got cable? Luke inquired, his arm still in a sling. Yeah, and all three gaming consoles. Now go up and select a room. If you like, you can bunk. Naruto ended as the teenagers approached the stairs to the left of the door. 
Penthouse Osborne. Goblin stood behind Harry while he slept on his bed. He noticed Venom erupting out his arm and placed his gloved hand towards it. And I had a clamp come out of my finger, so I picked some of it out before drawing it back in. Harry, you are not worthy of wearing this gorgeous creature on your lousy hide. But I'm sure I can find someone who is. He said this before heading out onto the patio and jumping onto his glider before taking off. What's the bathroom schedule? Ava inquired, crossing her arms. We'll go without one for a few days to see how long each of you takes. To maintain warm water, the longest will go last. However, you will each wait 10 minutes after the other to allow the water heater to reheat the water. Okay? You got cable? Luke inquired, his arms still in a sling. Yeah, and all three gaming consoles. Now go up and select a room. If you like, you can bunk. Naruto ended as the teenagers approached the stairs to the left of the door. Penthouse Osborne. Goblin stood behind Harry while he slept on his bed. He noticed Venom erupting out his arm and placed his gloved hand towards it. And I had a clamp come out of my finger, so I picked some of it out before drawing it back in. Harry, you are not worthy of wearing this gorgeous creature on your lousy hide. But I'm sure I can find someone who is. He said this before heading out onto the patio and jumping onto his glider before taking off. Now, 2 p.m. in New York City. Shinobi landed on a skyscraper in Times Square, overlooking a new shield test of their new LMDs or life model decoys, which can photographically project an exact appearance of a person and can put up a good fight. And Naruto was chosen to look through them to determine if they could be utilized to switch with him and his squad during school hours. I believe the others received a better deal. He was thinking this as he saw the LMD of Fury move about for the test. Suddenly, a swarm of men surrounded the dummy rage, all of which were dressed in green full body suits with cows, yellow eyes, harnesses, gloves, and boots. Hydra. Naruto thought as he recognized the gang he and the Avengers had previously faced. Hydra is a terrorist criminal paramilitary organization that seeks global dominance. It was established in ancient times as a secret society centered on the passionate adoration of a mighty inhuman exiled to the planet Maveth by ancient inhumans. Since his exile, the cult has been resolved to bring him back to Earth in order to begin a planetary takeover. The religion evolved over the years, adopting several forms, with its most recent incarnation being founded shortly after the emergence of Nazism in Germany by Johann Schmidt as the Nazi Schutzstaffel scientific branch. During this time, the cult adopted the moniker Hydra, which has since remained the organization's most popular nickname. Schmidt split Hydra from Nazi Germany during World War II to launch his own global conquest. It is now a foe of S.H.I.E.L.D. Naruto then collapsed as the phony fury was shot in the back by a lady. She is a tall and slim woman with long black hair that covers her right cheek. She's dressed in a skin-tight green bodysuit with the tops of her arms bare and two, X, belts around her waist. Madam Hydra is the current leader of Hydra. Naruto knelt as she took a pin from the LMD and placed it in her wrist gauntlet. I had a feeling this was a robotic fury. I was expecting it because I am aware that they possess a self-destruct code key. Madam Hydra now has one. With the press of a button, she shouted this while Naruto tackled her and a swarm of clones bound her guise. He sighed and muttered after hearing blasts through his earpiece. Fury, maybe next time they should each have their own code. As police and shield agents arrived, Naruto drew Madam Hydra up. Naruto yawned and stretched before coming across a subway entrance. Might as well turn in, I've been doing this since 5 this morning. Naruto boarded the subway in an almost empty car with two Caucasian older ladies dressed in business attire after changing out of his outfit. One Caucasian pregnant woman with long black hair and spectacles was grumbling as she looked at her phone while wearing a purple sweater over a black jacket, cargo trousers, and tennis shoes. And one Caucasian male with brown dreadlocks, an ear piercing, and a purple neck tattoo. He's dressed in a black beanie, a black jacket, pants, and tennis shoes. The car shook violently as they were lifted up and flung to the side. Naruto swiftly changed into his costume and pulled out a blue glow stick as the lights went off. Everyone okay? You've got to be kidding me. Did we just collide? Are you serious? The pregnant woman inquired, clutching her stomach. Goodness. At the very least, the harm appears to be minor, according to one elderly woman. How do you know? It's nearly pitch black. The other person responded. Okay, stay calm. I'll get us out of here, Naruto remarked before taking a kanai and jabbing it through one of the open windows. He dropped the stick and began dragging the others out, beginning with the elderly women. 
I didn't know Shinobi worked for the subway. I don't. I guess if you did, you wouldn't have broken the window. He then assisted the pregnant woman after they were freed. You gonna be alright, miss? He inquired, if I go into labor, I'll be sure to let you know. She was irritated. Yo, you had better not try to leave us. Because I just got out of prison, yo. The group's lone male yelled as he fell down. Yes, yes, maintain your dreadlocks. As they began walking, Naruto saw that the other cars were vacant before reaching a dead end. Looks like we're going to have to go the other way. He finished just as he noticed an opening beside the tunnel. Let's try this. As soon as they walked in, a green light flashed, revealing little mole-like people dressed in loincloths. Hiss. Okay, let's back up a little before I deal with these mole people, Naruto remarked, taking several steps back before the mole people jumped. Run, I'll keep them at bay. While the villagers fled, Naruto yelled and created clones to assist them. He hurried on before they came across another group led by a short man holding a wooden staff. He is dressed in a green complete bodysuit with a high collar and cape, has black hair, pale skin, and purple glasses. I'm the ruler down here. I am the embodiment of power. I am the mole. Ha 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 ha. Naruto began to chuckle at Mole Man. Stop laughing. I can't. Hello, my name is Mole Man. Fool, when I have conquered your universe, your type will learn to fear and respect me. Mole Naruto stopped giggling once the man yelled. So you dug that dead end? No, he did. Mole before Naruto built a clone, a very enormous star-nosed mole appeared. The clone threw a massive Rasengan, spiraling sphere, at the mole before punching him and knocking him out. Naruto then turned to see who was fighting the mole people before assisting and quickly finishing. We saw you standing up to the guy and were inspired. According to one elderly woman, we're also New Yorkers, this is something that comes easily, the other person stated. Yo, my book club buddies will never believe this, as the pregnant mother slumped to the ground and groaned, the man said with a black eye. Remember when I'd tell you if I went into labor? You're joking? Naruto inquired as she groaned aloud. Does it look like I'm joking? After giving delivery, Naruto led the group out and noticed a bunch of media waiting for them to take pictures. New York City Bank followed a few days later. Before her watch rang, Naruto and White Tiger had apprehended a bunch of masked guys attempting to rob a bank. White Tiger here, she said this while looking down at Fury. My name is Fury. Spymaster has escaped from Kimball Field. Stark Industries Experimental Mutant Growth Serum has been taken by him. Okay, Tiger, let's go, Naruto murmured, throwing his arm around her waist and sprinting out the door. Kendall Park. Well, we've arrived, that means you won't be feeling me up any longer, Naruto said as he drew to a halt in a vast area surrounded by hot air balloons. I, I wasn't feeling you up, she began to unwrap her arms from around her leader. Really? I assumed it was you when... He came to a halt when she seized his shoulders with her claws. Okay, kidding. He took a glance around before aiming his grapnel at the nearest balloon and dragging them both up to it. Don't mind us, we're just looking for a criminal, Naruto remarked before noticing Spymaster. He's dressed in a black full bodysuit with a yellow belt with a S on the clasp, yellow from the neck down, and a red globe with a knife on his chest. Yo! Naruto yelled before leaping to the balloon and punching Spymaster to the ground, knocking him out, before grabbing up a canister and commanding the balloon to fall. Did you really need me? White Tiger inquired before Naruto turned to face her. Of course, the hero always needs a good-looking female sidekick. I'm not a sidekick, Stark Expo follows a few days later. Naruto and Mary Jane were in a building in a holographic rainforest part. I can't believe we're stuck inside on the most beautiful day of the year, MJ grumbled as she gazed out the window at Central Park. I mean, come on. Naruto, just look around Central Park. A frog and a bird flew through Naruto, who returned the reporter's gaze. You're a reporter, MJ. Not everything that happens outside happens inside. Come on, Tony is here. The rainforest vanished as the two moved to a stage where Tony, dressed in a business suit, stood with two women dressed in red gowns. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to this year's Stark Expo. Tony spoke over the speakers while wearing a headset. Obviously, you recognize my dashing visage as Tony Stark. Millions regard him as a hero. I'm here to share the newest from Stark Innovations. The 4D TV Rhodes. A television with the most recent Stark Enterprise patented 4D technology. The Rhodes 4D TV is a glimpse into the future. 
a four-dimensional future that is truly immersive. Don't only travel around the world, explore it, M. Jay took notes as Tony finished. Crack, down, as lightning struck the stage, Naruto yelled. Look out, Electro, everyone looked up to find a man floating in the air, surrounded by yellow electricity. Electro is dressed in a green bodysuit, yellow gloves and boots, a big, X, on his chest adorned with electricity bolts, and a yellow electric star mask. Why waste time watching television when you can have an electrifying experience? Like a thousand watts of electricity flowing through you. Run, get out, what's an electronics expo without a little? Shinobi's rubber shirt then punched Electro as he and Iron Man descended from the ceiling. I, I give up, as Naruto approached, Electro mumbled something before electricity enveloped his right hand. He then attacked Iron Man, ordering him to shoot Naruto with his repulsors, causing Naruto and Electro to fall onto his 4D TV screen. Within the television, Naruto sighed as he shook his head and realized he was in a big metropolis. What, didn't we hit Tony's TV? He inquired before a bus-sized reptilian foot landed just inches away from him. Naruto moaned and slowly raised his head, reconstructing what occurred before to witnessing the giant reptile destroying the city with spiked plates protruding from its backs. Sigh. At least it's not that 98 one. He muttered this before turning and fleeing. And noticed Electro with a swollen hand. Ow. I cut my hand. RRRUUUU. Naruto shouted as he passed the enemy. UUUUNNNN. What on earth is that thing? What happened to us? Before sprinting alongside Naruto, Electro inquired. That old Japan monster movie, it's not the 98 one is it? Nope, the design is different. Naruto responded before they found themselves in a vampire film from the 1920s. What the hell? Naruto inquired before they found themselves in a western as Electro attempted to attack and on a hill with animals with TVs in their guts. Oh, bleep, no. Naruto screamed blinking as his curse was bleeped. They then appear in a room before the wall is broken down, holding a large glass pitcher of purple liquid in a smaller pitcher. Oh. No. Electro screamed, cutting the drink mascot off and directing him to walk backward and exit. They were then returned to the exhibition, where Iron Man captured Electro with his repulsors, creating a bubble around Electro. Can you tell me what happened? Where have you gone? Iron Man inquired, lifting his faceplate. In that TV, Fascinating, so you was teleported into the shows? We need to think about that. Naruto then severed Iron Man's arm. Yes, yes. Later, he then appeared in costume alongside Mary Jane before departing for Central Park as the sunset. The museum of the next day, you're so uncultured. Mary Jane said to Naruto, who was photographing her in the new exhibit. Naruto deadpanned as he gazed at the diamond encrusted fake skull, it's a skull with diamonds on it. You cannot be serious. Good day, miss. Walking up, a man with an Australian accent stated. He is dressed in a brown trench coat and a red beanie. Maybe I can explain ta er mate here the otherworldly beauty and profound meaning of the Dinkum masterpiece, how it plays with the concept of worth and identity and what have ya. Exactly. Nice accent, where are you from? Naruto inquired. Hello, Australia? They teach us in Sydney to value outstanding achievements in artistic expression. And the ladies? The man said this while wrapping his right arm around Mary Jane's shoulders. Seems like you're appreciating a little fast, Naruto observed before hearing static from the man's headwear. Stop babbling, Hamish, you show pony, grab the thingo, a man with an Australian accent said. Did your hat talk? Naruto inquired before grabbing Mary Jane and pulling her away as Hamish's cap slipped off, revealing robotic kangaroo ears and armor as he tore off his jacket. As Hamish hopped to the skull on his robotic kangaroo legs, he pulled Naruto towards the balcony, revealing that they were on the middle floor. I apologize for smashing and jumping, New York, but the kangaroo has to get through. Naruto plummeted to the floor, gripped the bottom of the swing, and went inside a room to change costumes. Shinobi jumped up to hurl a bola at the kangaroo's feet, causing him to bounce up off the balcony into the ceiling, followed by Naruto, before a second powerful man dressed in kangaroo armor jumped on Naruto. Call this sticky beak an ambo. 1. Watch the skullmate, kangaroo, 2. Said to his brother Jack. Damn it, me too. Before they landed, Naruto yelled. You've come a guster this time, yagala, as Naruto glanced at them, kangaroo said. Either I got a concussion, or you're making words up. What you've got is trouble, courtesy of the kangaroo brothers, before Naruto raced past them, 
Snatching the skull, Jack said. See ya, Naruto screamed as he looked at the two before being punched by another kangaroo-themed man with long gray hair. 3. This is old man, Naruto stumbled and hit his head before hearing a feminine voice behind him. Looking back, he noticed a woman with wild red hair and shoulder-length bangs, who was likewise dressed in kangaroo-themed armor. My name is Jill. 4. You a kangaroo brother also? Kangaroo sister, and you're gonna hit me too? After that, she whipped her tail at him. I'm sorry, mate. I'm sure you're a really cute guy below that mask. Ah, that's sweet. Before kneeling to clutch the skull, Naruto said as he was hit. Ah, come on. Can you do a Sheila? Jill inquired as Naruto returned her gaze. Sorry, he then rushed away, the kangaroo family pursuing him. Shinobi, look out. As Naruto passed her, he was assaulted by two twin men in kangaroo armor with red hair. Boomer and Buck, 5. Are the names of these two? Wonderful, bros, I obtained the Duvilaki. Before Naruto jumped up and swiped the skull, Boomer said. Only for Jill to reclaim it. Good on ya, handsome, she yelled, thrusting out her tongue. Thanks, but no thanks, lady. Drop it, yank. Naruto raced forward and snatched the skull, she said. Grab it. Yank. He then jumped to the ceiling and sat cross-legged while the kangaroo family sought to grab him. He waited a few minutes before unleashing a kanai explosive tag. Boom. As the cops ran in and removed the family, he dropped to tie up the gang. Naruto went out of a room after the cops had departed and was tackled in a hug by MJ. Naruto. You're fine. I was so concerned. Yeah. I'm okay. I only got a shot of the end. Naruto stated while holding his camera. To make it up to me, you'll have to come to my next assignment. As they went out of the hotel, she said. Yeah. I don't think so, please, she questioned, her eyes streaming as she wrapped her arms over his right arm. Sigh, okay. Night at Naruto's house. Before knocking, Naruto strolled up the stairs and entered his bathroom. Okay, I need in there, he yelled just as the door opened. I had a long day and I. He paused as he noticed Ava wearing a white towel that exposed her cleavage and barely came down past her waist. Okay, all yours. She murmured this as Naruto saw a drop of water travel down her cleavage from her nose. Huh? He inquired before she moved out and down the hall into her room, locking the door behind her. To be continued. That's it for this place guys, don't forget to enter this video. I hope you did enjoy the pretty story and if you did, like, share and subscribe for more and thank you all for having support and have a great day.